Hi there, and welcome to the Love or Leave the Law podcast with your hosts, Adam Ouellette and Casey Berman. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Love or Leave the Law podcast. It's Adam again, joined with Casey. We've got a really cool topic for you today. Uh, One of the things I wanted to remind everybody is if you go to loveorleavepodcast.com, you can sign up to get some stuff that you won't get if you're just listening to this stuff on YouTube. One of the things that we have is an amazing virtual assistant who does transcripts of the podcast, which if you don't sign up there, you won't get them. There are also links that you can watch the videos on uh, our site and YouTube. There's all kinds of options when you sign up with us, and you'll have the opportunity to do some free webinars with us too. So if you haven't done that, check it out. It's all free. It's all good. We want to give you the best experience we can and have you learn stuff from us, right? Casey, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're talking about today? Exactly. Well, thanks everyone for joining One thing I want to talk about today is something that's uh, uh, close to my heart, close to something that I've been working on myself that Adam's helped me a lot with, which is um, and and something that I want Adam to speak to today um, that I think will be really helpful for all of you out there, whether you're looking to kind of refresh your career in the law or or even considering leaving it. And that is our beliefs, uh, what we think, um, our habits. Um, how we've kind of been programmed or how we continue to program uh, our life. And, um, you know, these beliefs can really be obstacles to to what we do in the world, to really to our happiness. And I think one of the issues that I've seen is um, it's one thing to to be able to uncover what these beliefs are. But what I've struggled with is really, uh, really even seeing and recognizing that these beliefs and obstacles are even out there. Um, so I want to talk to you today, Adam, about something that I think is extremely important uh, for the love or leave uh, community. And that is around beliefs as obstacles uh, to us being happy. So My first question to you is, before we even get into some of these limiting beliefs, is what is really getting in the way of attorneys even believing that their beliefs are obstacles? Does that make sense? It does. It totally makes sense. And and I want people to make sure that they go back and listen to one of the first few insights. It might be three or four on beliefs, because that will give you five, six, seven minutes on a short primer I did on beliefs. But one of the things that we don't understand about our lives is that we bring a different perspective from anybody else on this planet. We have different fingerprints. We have different beliefs. And why is it that there's so many different types of uh, everything under the sun? Why is there so many different types of of uh, countries and religions and and people that have different ideals and uh, look at the factions of different political groups in just in this country. Yes, there's two main ones because when we when you and you realize once we look at beliefs in general and we start to understand how we create beliefs and how important beliefs are in our lives, they our beliefs are everything. And you're going to hear this a lot through this podcast because we're going to talk about all kinds of beliefs because there are six or seven main beliefs that really shift our ability to be different in our lives. And when we understand that when, I think from my reading and looking at my own life, by the time we're seven, a lot of our beliefs are set, which is kind of sad yeah. because you don't know a lot when you're seven, right, Casey? I mean, yeah, but you've learned enough that you take those beliefs forward with you. And then they say, this is the experts. I know there's a lot of them out there, but the experts seem to think that 14 is is the time where you're in your teens and you start to get your worldview because of many influences and factors. And Um, and Adam, you know, I've seen, I have a nine-year-old and a six-year-old, and some of the beliefs that we've dealt with is, you know, don't climb up too high, on that hill, you're going to fall. Uh, don't use a knife. That's you're right. going to cut yourself. And, you know, I know those are simple ones, but uh, 
I, I see them coming out as a parent, and I know you're going to get into more detailed beliefs for our audience around profession, but where does that come from? That comes from a lack of trust that my six-year-old doesn't really know and understand a knife, and they're going to cut their finger off, and we're going to rush to the hospital, and blah, 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 right? And so I see this. I've been One reason I really want to talk about it is I've been unpacking these beliefs I've had, whether it's something really important about my skills and per career and whatever, or it's something as simple as as using utensils around the kitchen, right? And so um, I wanted to give that example to kind of ground our audiences. Like these are, they're simple beliefs, but they carry throughout the rest of our life. Yeah, and in looking at beliefs as a child in terms of don't put your finger on the hot stove, watch out yeah. with that knife, those are things that our parents instill in us to protect us. Uh, our parents could not say anything and let us figure it out, but as our parents do the best they can with what they've got based on their level of consciousness, based on their level of understanding what I'm talking about. And most human beings don't have any clue that they have a set of beliefs that run their lives in every way. And they, those right. beliefs can be changed. And, but when, when I talk about youngsters having beliefs, that's like worldviews, that's uh, community views and that stuff carries through life. And when I started studying about this, I don't know, about 20 some years ago and really became, I want to call it a hobby, but I want, you know, I wanted to know more about life. And I've said before, I, I've been a student of life and I wanted to learn as much as I could about how can I live the life that I really want, not yeah. let me continue living uh, the life that my parents have or had. That's uh, right. And that's what I was doing when I was in my uh, late teens and early twenties and even into law school, I was carrying forward what they believed. And, and I started looking at it and I'm like, I don't want to believe most of what they believe. Yes. I don't want to, I don't want to be a kid and cut my finger off or, uh, hurt myself somehow. And those kind of things are, uh, important because they help you to avoid pain. <laughs> right. I mean, right. not putting your hand on a burning stove, it, 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 it can be important. Those kind of things are important, but it's the bigger beliefs about life, about uh, being in a business, about health. Right. Those kind of beliefs are really what you're asking the question about. And how is it that... And I don't... And Adam, let me jump in. Yeah, I, please. You know, for everybody, this is not supposed to be a manifesto against our parents or rail oh, against no. them. I mean, I'm a parent myself and I, I, you know, I have my parents are still alive and I talk to them and so on. So it's not meant to be an, a negative at all. As far as I just want to bring up, it's more of there were certain beliefs I have, I know, as a child and now as a parent that, like you said, I don't think they're in alignment with me anymore. They well, they don't really make me happy. I'm not, I, I'm not feeling it, but nonetheless, I'm still believing it. Well, and that's a, a profound statement that you just made. It's opening up to understanding that you don't want to believe something anymore. And that in itself is massive. It really is. Yeah. Because... Most people, as we talked about when we were planning this episode, Casey, you talked about the fish being in the bowl and you say, oh, fish, you live in water. And the fish says, water? What's that? Yeah. That's right. where most people find themselves. But understanding when we talk about your parents and parents in general, that's where I believe the majority of our beliefs come from. Yeah. Now, yes, there's other factors. And I go into this in, in a much different greater detail in raising the bar. And we're going to go into this in many, many ways in this podcast. And then yeah. there's, I have a whole, Casey, you know this, I have a whole program that I have an outline for that I will be doing just on beliefs because they are yeah. that important to our lives. But let's look about uh, how other ways we, we form our beliefs. Our community helps us form our beliefs. What does that mean? Well, yeah. our relatives, uh, grandparents, yeah. aunts, uncles, our school, our school system, yeah. people, our teachers, um, television is one. You know, when I was a child, I remember my mother sitting me down as an, a little kid from when I can remember. I mean, you know, when I was a baby, I don't remember much. But yeah. she would sit me down in front of uh, Sesame Street. Yeah. And it was a babysitter. And a lot of people in our generation and younger, uh, TV is a big part of our lives. And, yeah. But the problem with TV is that, what do they call the stuff on TV? Programming. Programming. Programming, yeah. you know? So, TV. And I know for me, TV, in my family, I grew up in a Jewish family, 
educated, professional. I loved it. I had a great upbringing. And I think when it came to TV, when it came to teachers, you know, it was really, like you said, be a doctor, be a lawyer, be a business person. Uh, I remember L.A. Law in the 80s or Perry Mason reruns that my grandmother would watch from the 60s. And so, you know, my beliefs of that, I was supposed to be an attorney. I mean, I remember that in high school thinking, well, I'm supposed to be an attorney. I speak well. Uh, I like to be persuasive. I'm kind of an opinionated 18 year old. I'm going to go to law school in a few years. And it just that was my belief. And going beyond that or thinking in any other way was just something I kind of wasn't supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, even in my senior yearbook, uh, I said I wanted to be a lawyer and then a judge. And then when right. I got into the law and practicing law, I decided judges have it hard. <laughs> I don't, yeah. don't want to be a yeah. judge. I don't want to be dealing with other attorneys all day because it's a difficult yeah. proposition at best. And so yeah. I was there with you, Casey, and a lot of us were in high school and be, even before where we were like lawyer, lawyer, lawyer. And, it, you know, a lot of us went to law school because of the urgings of our parents. I went to law school because I couldn't do math or science all that well. I was really good in English and history and yeah. and pretty much everything else outside of, of science yeah. and math. Um, so I gravitated towards that. And that were, yeah. you know, that's when I was doing research for Raising the Bar, the book, I, I was looking at why is it that in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and even the 80s, why were parents pushing their children to become professionals, doctors, lawyers, CPAs, business people? Um, because, and there's reasons for it, uh, but that was based on a collective belief system that being a lawyer, uh, you could be influential, you could create change, you could make a lot of money, it's right. a good living. And those things have changed a lot over the years, and we've talked right. some about that. Uh, I wouldn't want to be a doctor right now. Um, I would much rather be a lawyer if if I had the choice between the two. Right. Thank goodness I wasn't good in math and science because being a doctor right. today, man, that is uh, yeah. I, I feel bad for him be, be, with the insurance and all the rest of the stuff happening. Um, but you know, so that you bring up a great point, which is that collective belief belief system. And for me, that's the idea of like a fish in water. If you're growing up in the 70s, 80s, even 90s, there's just this water around you saying, go to law school, go to law school, go to law school. And, yep. and that's just what you do. And then you get in law school and then you graduate and you have this belief system that there is transactional or litigation. That's, that's a belief system that needs to be shattered. And we've talked about it in previous episodes. We're going to talk about it a lot more. I'm reading some articles that were on various sections of the ABA about, you know, there are niches out there that have nothing to do with either of them. And there, there is a whole middle class. And as much as the middle class is shrinking from the government and everything that they're supposedly doing from the news media, which, you know, they, they program us as well, um, the middle class represents an amazing niche that you can help as a lawyer. And it has nothing, a lot of it has nothing to do with transaction or, or litigation. And so one of the things Casey wanted to bring forward for you guys in this episode and grill me on <laughs> was that there are collective belief systems that we have yeah. as lawyers and there's collective belief systems in every aspect of life. And if you want to know more about this, then stay tuned uh, Esquire Academy has multiple modules on beliefs that I'm going to be releasing here in the near future. So if you really want to deep dive in this, which I think everybody needs to, I mean, as soon as I, as I told you before, and I'll finish this thought and then we'll move forward because we want to talk about what these collective belief systems are in the law. Um, yeah. I was researching beliefs in general and I started looking at all these books and I'm, I'm one where I will study stuff. I'll study a book and I'll break it down to an outline. And I'm like, how can I implement this in my life? The stuff that feels good to me that my intuition is telling me, you know what, this is stuff that you need to change in your life. And I was looking at the various, uh, types of beliefs that we form in that, you know, the collective beliefs, and then you look and you can break them down in world beliefs, country, uh, state, city, community, family, right. and then our individual beliefs. And, the, and they're all encompassing in there. And so we have a collective set of beliefs as lawyers. We do. And so part of the process that Casey and I are working on with this podcast is to break up some of those collective beliefs so that we can help you to be a better lawyer, to be able to leave the law, to love your life. Right. Because 
when we're going to look at some of these collective belief systems, the reason that they're there is because a small group of people agreed that this was the correct thing. And that's all a belief is. A belief in you is a thought you've had more than twice. That's all it is. And so something you keep thinking. That's right. Over and over. And then it becomes cemented and those things become patterns and habits. And then you build these neural nets in your brain where these things are stored and we, so let's get something straight before we start. They don't, science cannot show us where a belief comes from. They can't. So that's a little mystical stuff there. That's a little different there. Science doesn't know where the belief comes from. And so when you think about that, or a thought, a thought really, a thought, a beliefs are thoughts, but science can't tell us where the thought comes from. They can see it register in the brain somewhere, wherever the synapse happens, but they don't know where it comes right. from. Where does it come from? I don't know. I think it comes from the universe. I think it comes from the collective energy that we all call the universe. I don't know that either. If science can't prove it to us, that's one thing. But Casey, what do you want to say? Yeah, so I wanted on that point, uh, there's a lot of beliefs we're going to get into around, you know, is something easy versus hard and money and so on. Before we get, before you talk about the beliefs, one thing that was really important for me was even realizing or acknowledging that I had these beliefs and it's kind of the step before. And one thing I struggle with is just what you were talking about, which is, well, if scientists haven't approved, uh, approved it, if there's no evidence of it, I'm an attorney, I'm focused on evidence. I need empirical data. Um, if there's no research, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's hard for me to believe it. Yeah. Yeah. And, how do be, and and it's a little woo woo it's a little out there it's a little mystical and so on for some um, it will but be but i sure. know yeah and i'm a very practical person myself as, as and am i've I. been able to yes are you been able to shift i mean even though we're leaving the law and doing other things we're still attorneys and think that way many times but how the first question i have for you is before we even start tackling the beliefs around money and hard you know life is harder easy and so on how can an attorney who's skeptical, who needs to see evidence of this, how can that person start um, believing in something that isn't sort of empirically proven to them? Part of the challenge that we have as lawyers, Casey, is that we are analytical. We're more left brain. We're more science. Right. But we will believe science more than we will a spiritual teacher. And there's nothing wrong with That's that. Right. It's just how we've been trained. A lot of us come to the uh, practice of law because of those analytical ways of thinking. Um, but the fact is there's loads of people on this planet that are more right brain, which is creative, uh, artistic. Yeah. I'm not artistic. I'm creative. I'm not artistic. I can't draw a straight line. Would I love to be able to learn how to paint someday? I don't know, maybe, but I've never been very good at it, and I didn't ever really enjoy it. So my creativity comes from videos and recording uh, podcasts and teaching um, and brainstorming and doing automatic writing, as, as I've done many times in the past. But when you look at the science behind quantum physics, and that could be a little woo woo too, but there is science that this is based on. And this is really what caught my trigger back in, uh, Oh five, when the movie, what the bleep do we know came out? And I write about it in my book. And I think everybody should watch that movie because it blends the left analytical side of your brain with the right creative side of your brain. And it kind of merges those, which is really the goal. I think as a human being, I don't want to be one or the other top heavy. I want to be in the middle where I have access to that creative part and I have access to that analytical part. And so I started questioning those very same things that you're asking me about back when I'm reading this stuff. When when I'm hearing the tag catchphrase, beliefs create your reality. I'm hearing this from coaches that I have, life coaches and business coaches, and I'm hearing it a lot. You see the movie The Secret. They talk about that. And that those that movie The Secret and the movie What the Bleep Do We Know put me on a path of really learning That's tremendous right. amount about beliefs. And I yeah. read everything I get my hands on. I went and spent tens of thousands of dollars on workshops and coaching from people that I felt knew this stuff. And they did because they were they were uh proving to me that their beliefs create their reality. When they would say to me, Look, I make 
a very good living because I changed my beliefs and they walk me through right. the process and, and then I'm reading. Right. So I put together this stuff in my own uh, resume, I guess you can say, and I created a daily practice around this. And so one of the things that's, that happened, and I'll, I'll bring you to um, a quick story, 2006, 2007, I'm a real estate lawyer and the real estate market crashes, and I know this stuff. I'm putting this stuff together. I went to my partner at the time, and I said, hey, join me in this. Let's shift our beliefs, because I really yeah. believe that our beliefs create a reality, and I want to put this into motion. And he looked at me and said, are you nuts? This is nuts. Yeah. I said, yeah. Bye-bye. So we, we split. And at that point, I had no law firm. I had no business. I was starting from scratch. So I had to go and create a new law firm and figure it all out. And I was at the point where I wasn't relying on anybody else in my life as a partner to say, yeah. you know, if this stuff really works, I'm going to prove it. I, I, what is there to lose? I yeah. do it. I've, I'm paying this coach good money. I've got a coach that help me for many years implement this. And I'm like, I've got support system. I've got the ideas and I have the outline of what I want to do. What's the worst that happens? I look yeah. at the coach and say, you're freaking ridiculous. You're nuts. I should have believed my old partner, which that relationship had run its course anyways. But, but I didn't have anything to lose Casey. So I said, yeah, let me try this. My analytical side of my brain was going, this is horseshit. How can this be? This is not what we were taught. This is not what right. our collective is taught. And there's many reasons right. behind that. And I don't want to get into that because I'll get on my soapbox. But I, I believe that uh, that they don't want us to know this because if they know this, then we can free our minds from a lot of this That's limitation. Right. And there really isn't any limitation after that. And that may sound strange, you know but it's true. What's funny for me, and you and I have aligned in, in similar paths, um, I saw What's the Bleep years ago, uh, The Secret, uh, my wife showed me in 06, I think, right before our daughter was born. I'll never forget after uh, my daughter was born, she was a year old or so, it was like 08, and I used to read the New York Times religiously, and they have, you know, all the news that's fit th to print is what it would say on the yeah. top right-hand corner, and I remember looking at all the, the death and just all yeah. the bad news and thinking, you know, I'm not going to believe this anymore. I'm not yeah. going to believe what the media says is what I, I should believe. And I think what that did for me was it enabled me to see, because I'm very empirical, evidence-based, is as I went through a similar path of kind of uh, uh, deconstructing these beliefs, is I saw so many people in history that I respected who were scientists, Einstein, Benjamin Franklin, yeah. Um, ancient Greek scientists throughout it Plato, all. We all Socrates, know Socrates. I mean, there there's a Socrates, list yeah. that goes on and on that you could use to verify what we're saying right now. Exactly. Uh, ancient Sanskrit teachings, powerful. the teachings of the Vedic traditions, Christianity, Judaism, right. all the religions talk about this, but the the religions as we see them today don't speak of it because it is it is about a control. It is about. It, not wanting people to know what we're teaching right now. So it's, yeah. It's so ironic that top scientists out there, Einstein says imagination is more powerful than That's right. the knowledge. Most people know that quote. But seeing it, and so I finally said to myself, and this is one way I think attorneys who are so evidence-based can start becoming comfortable with this with with this faith in yes. that they're the beliefs is seeing that other people out there who are even more empirical and scientific ba based than we attorneys are yeah. as equal they have believed in this they yeah. have evangelized well and, and when and, i saw that yeah. i said you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna lessen my need for control and i'm going to explore it and i and i would encourage everyone to kind of look at people they respect and even even entrepreneurs now richard branson even donald trump yeah. mark cuban all these people who are profit and loss balance sheet excel sheet you know focus people speak of this in the yeah. and, and top athletes yeah. speak of getting in the zone and when i said you know what when all of these people can do it I think I can also have a little faith. And of course. I, that's one way that I think many of us can do yeah. it to kind of start aligning with what you're talking about. Well, and, and let's just give a caveat. You know, there was a lot of people when The Secret came out saying, this is it. This is the answer. This is going to change everybody's life. 
a two-hour video is just opening you up to the possibilities of it. They didn't That's deep right. dive into how do you shift your beliefs? How do you change what has been cemented in there when you were since you were 7, 14, and throughout your right. whole life? And that's one of the things that I found. You can't, you can't listen to a 20, 30-minute podcast episode and get all the answers. I mean, I was coached and and seminars and books and then put it all together for myself. And, and so I'll get back to real quickly. I then started to put into practice a daily ritual, which was meditation, mindfulness, present moment, spending time with my intentions, visualizing, and then that helped me clear out beliefs. And that is a process. This isn't like pull up to McDonald's and you get something and you eat it and, and you, it's changed you forever. This is a process where if these beliefs have been in you since you were a child and a lot of them haven't changed, then how do you think it's going to happen overnight that you're going to shift beliefs and have new belief okay. systems that will change your life? I mean, Adam, one sec, one yeah. sec, the M word meditation. I, right. I, it, it, it is really loaded how the the listener right now who's wearing a blazer and a tie who's who's focused on a hearing who is as you know type a uh, always on a, his uh, his or her cell phone how does that person de- make it easier like how can that person even start flowing and and starting to do meditation what make it accessible for them it is how'd very you, it's, you- it's very accessible all it really takes, and there's many ways to do this, but I found the best way to get me started in it is to just sit down with the intention of shutting off that mind part of our mind that runs like and it never stops. It runs and runs and runs. Yeah. And so yeah. all you have to do very simply to get started with quieting your mind is sit in a chair where you're not going to be disturbed, sit, lie, lay down somewhere, and hopefully that you don't fall asleep because sometimes meditation, yeah. you'll fall asleep. But even if you do, you know, there's no right or wrong way to do any of this. Quieting but, your mind. It's really about quieting your mind. Right. Well, yeah. and, and it's, it is a process too. So for me, with that question, how did I start? I would sit in my lazy boy chair, I had a, a room in, in my house since I started meditating that was like a guest room that I had a, a lazy boy chair in. I would sit there, I'd close the door, I'd lock the dogs out at first because, you know, they're in there looking at me like uh, throw yeah. the tennis ball and play with me. <laughs> um, That's right. And all I did was focus on my breath in and out. That is the easiest way to meditate. There are lots of detailed deep ways to meditate that are profound, but you want to start doing it, sit down, focus all of your attention on the in and out of your breath. Your mind will wander as it always does. Bring it back. Just keep doing that. Now, that I breathe in. When I do it, I, I breathe in through my nose. You use a nose or mouth. How do you do it? I don't care. I, I, I've done all of which way, and there's ways of taking your thumb and closing off one side. I, whatever. I, you know, there, um, one of the things I did here is, and I, you know, take this with a grain of salt. This is someone else's beliefs. Um, is breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. But then I heard something about, well, then you're leaving air in some place. Uh, whatever, whatever feels yeah. good to you. Um, I will normally but you use. You know what's great about it? What's great about it, and is when you're focusing on your breathing, you you can't focus on anything else. That's the key, and that I'll tell you. That process is deeper and and more uh, detailed than I can get into right now. We're going to end this episode yeah. in a minute. We don't want to run too long, but but that principle, which we will talk about more later, focusing just on your breath is the practice of being mindful. And what does that mean? Very quickly, mindfulness is getting out of the ego mind that runs and talks to you all day long. And it usually doesn't say very good stuff. It's judgmental. Right. It's, it talks shit on everybody. It's That's not right. very positive. It tells you doom and gloom. This is why the news is always doom and gloom. And this is why people's it limits you. mind says this because that's all we hear. We look online, killing, and oh my God, so and so did this, and Obama and Trump and Clinton, yeah. ah, whatever, you know. Um, so that focusing on your breath takes you out of that egoic hamster wheel mind and it puts you in yeah. a place of power. What is that power? It's you focusing your attention, focused attention 
is where we want to move you to. This is what we're going to teach you. Uh, some in this podcast, this is what I teach in Esquire Academy. I'm going to be doing all kinds of stuff on this because this is where the power as a human being comes in. When you shut that bullshit mind off that feeds you all kinds of negativity and judges you and everybody else in the world, and yeah. you can direct your attention to what you want and think, if you're going to think, think about stuff that you want in a way that you've woken up. This is why in Raising the Bar, I have the 10 steps to awakening. That is what the awakening is. So yeah. on that note, we're going to uh, leave you in this episode. The next episode, we're going to continue yeah. on with this profound, important discussion that is probably the most important thing and stuff you're, you're going to be exposed to. Uh, any any time and this is a building yeah. process and so stick with us this stuff is going to change you if you allow it to that's the difference you have to be ready to change and we're going to talk more about that too so Casey yeah. any parting words in this episode before we say goodbye and we'll get back into this and record the next one Adam I want to say thanks for letting me grow you I'm going to grow you on the next Keep one going. Uh, and we're going to get into uh, actual beliefs and uh, for you to see but I think what the the big takeaway here is um, you know, you may not be seeing it, but there are these obstacles. And so I think by, by, by taking these ideas and becoming thoughtful and, and, and looking at the fact that you don't necessarily need the evidence to see it, but having a little bit of faith and a little bit of mindfulness, yep. um, this can really just open up huge opportunities that ultimately lead to happiness, ultimately right. lead to uh, a little bit more of, a, of uh, identifying with yourself. So um, we're going to stop here. I'm excited. I can talk about this for hours. We're going to uh, do it in the next episode. Uh, so please come back and look to more for Adam. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.